We're the Cornell Bell Ringers. I play E and F4. So they're fairly large. They're not the largest bells, but they're one of the largest bells in, the, in our band. You have to have some arm and shoulder strength, but not a lot. It does help to be coordinated. It helps if you can keep a rhythm. It's very important. As I said, we would do, go to Dunrovan and Mayford and the Golden Center and around Christmas time, we used to go up to the, the old mall and play while the Lions garage sales were on. I think the original funding was for a senior's activity. And uh, the, buy, the purchase of the bells, was there was a grant of some kind. And probably the, one of the mid-sized bells might be a couple of thousand dollars for a bell. So the sets are, you're looking at thousands of dollars. I've been with the group since 1994. And I was invited to come in by Mavis Goodman, who was sort of their leader, but there were very few of them. Well, actually, my favorite part is actually playing the bells. So I'm really happy when we're short so that I can fill a position. Because playing, playing the bells is really, it's got a lovely feeling, a sound, you know, and then you're part of the group. There are some pieces where you really, really need a conductor because there are different... Um, you have to slow down and speed up and get louder and get softer and some people lose their place and you have to, you know, they do need direction and the more complicated pieces for sure. You get two, two notes, so A and B, with the black note in between. So if you're looking at a piano, it's going to be A, B flat B. Those would be your bells, three bells. And so when you're looking at the music, you only have to know where those are on the staff if you've never read music before, you only have to know those two. The heavy, heavier bells are the low notes, right? And uh, yeah, they're heavier, so you have to anticipate. Yeah. But I, it doesn't take long to get used to that because it's a bit like ringing a school bell or a, a dinner bell. You do have to understand about timing and things like that. As you join this group, you learn more about the timing, how many notes in the bar, how many beats in the bar. And then if you have a little bit of syncopation or dotted notes and staccato notes, all of that music stuff. So anyway, this is an example of one of our larger bells. It's a G, and uh, you see it's not that big. And to stop that sound, you push it on your, on your chest, so we're not allowed to wear buttons or brooches. Not allowed to, you take them off. And inside the bell, there's a line. 
and that's where they tune the actual bell itself. And if you look inside there, there's all kinds of little nuts and bolts and things like that, which, so it's a little bit adjustable. And then on the top of the bell, there's a flange, black or white, and that is to go with the black or white notes on the piano. So that would be the flat or the sharp, and the white one is all the white notes. And if I turn them over, you can see the note that it is. And this is two octaves higher than this one because how small it is. It's kind of a circular motion. So you hit it, little, a little flick to make it hit, but then you carry the sound. So it sort of comes out of your belt. I think they were asking for players at the time and I thought I'd give it a try. Although I was hesitant because I don't read music and I don't play music. And so, and they said, oh, no, no problem. So when I first started, Amanda would, would decide what piece we're playing and she'd come and mark my book for me. Okay, these are, your, these are the bells you're playing. L is your left hand, R is your right hand. And so I learned then, but now I've since learned music and I can read music now, and I know where my bells are. <laughs> I both, uh, just F and G5 plus F sharp and G sharp. When you play bells, they have to be sharp and, and closed off so that you can hear the music. Otherwise, it doesn't sound right. Yes, you have to wear gloves with the bells because you fit, otherwise you'd be leaving marks all over them. So we play for an hour, and then we stop and have a coffee break so you can visit and socialize. And that's more important with COVID because I live on my own, so you don't get the interaction with people quite the same as we used to. So no, I really enjoy it. Something to look forward to each week. Um, as you get older, you lose some of your mental facilities, so I thought working in a team keeps your mind active to, you know, to, because you change key signatures and, you know, there's different instruments and yeah, it's good. <laughs> but I mean, it's a fairly new instrument as opposed to a violin. And they're always coming up with new um, uh, techniques. You know, you notice that we were hitting them with the little spongy things on mallets, you know, and then thumb, using your thumb to make it staccato or plucking the inside. Those are all techniques that have developed from just plain old ringing. And also this group is so good because anybody can join it. You know, if somebody comes to town and what's going on? Well, they've got the bell ringers. They welcome people all the time. Well, we need 11 players and a conductor is 12. Um, if we had too many people, we would do something. We would manage because we'd probably give them some chimes to play the same notes. We'd, we'd play music that was more complicated if we had more people. Oh, well, we couldn't come here for all of 2020 after, I don't know if we shut down, if we were shut down early 2020. And then we never came back until September 2021. Well, I just hope that we can go back to performing. I think everybody would really like that. It, 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 it's really good for us because it's a little bit nerve wracking. And, you know, people really, really thrive when they've succeeded at something nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs>